everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video. I hope you're all really well and you've had a good week. So today's video is going to be talking about everything that I made in February. So February was a month of making some rather unseasonal makes because I was going on holiday and I wanted to get some summer clothes sewn up. Um, so apologies that these aren't all sort of wintry makes if you are in the UK, but if you aren't in the UK then hopefully they'll give you some inspiration still and hopefully if you are in the UK um, maybe you'll be inspired to sew some things for summer too. So before I get started, if you are new to my channel, my channel is all about sewing and sometimes knitting and all about making a handmade wardrobe. If you are new, I'd love you to consider subscribing and if you do enjoy this video, I'd love it if you gave it a like at the end. I just wanted to say thank you so much to everyone who asked how my holiday was. It was really, really lovely. Um, we had a really lovely week. Everything went smoothly in the end after all of the COVID scares and COVID testings and things. I'm so pleased that we actually managed to go and we got there in the end. Yes, I did massively overpack. <laughs> if you did watch my packing video, some of the comments on that video were so funny. Um, yeah, I did take way too many clothes, but I think I just got a bit overexcited at being able to get all my summer clothes out and choose what I was going to take. Um, and actually, I am glad that I did pack quite a good choice because I wasn't quite sure what I would need and how much I need to cover up, as I said. Um, so it was quite useful having quite a lot of clothes, but um, yeah, did massively overpack as always, but I always do. So just standard me and I think for that holiday that kind of holiday it didn't matter too much because we did have quite a big luggage allowance and just in case you're worrying um, I have been on the kind of holiday camping holiday where you have to be really minimal and only pack a couple of pairs of shorts and one hoodie and things like that so I am used to being minimal as well I'm just not very good at it <laughs> Anyway, with all that said, I will get on to chatting about what I've been making in February. So one of my makes is actually what I'm wearing, so I'm going to leave that till last. Um, but first of all, I want to talk about um, a swimsuit that I made. So as we were thinking about um, going on holiday and things, I knew that I needed a new swimsuit. And I always said to myself that I would never, ever make swimwear. Um, I don't really know why. I think it just didn't really appeal to me that much. And I didn't really fancy sewing with all that elastic and lycra and things like that. Um, so swimwear was always something that I never thought that I would actually make. But in my hunt for a ready to wear swimming costume, I just hate buying swimwear. I can never find anything that I feel comfortable in. Um, and it just takes ages. And also I find swimwear really quite pricey. Don't know if anyone else finds that, but it's really quite expensive to buy a new swimming costume. So in the end, I thought, why don't I just try and make one? Um, I've seen lots of sewists out there on Instagram and on YouTube and things make really lovely swim suits. Why don't I just give it a go myself? So one of the patterns that I've seen in the sewing community and I've really liked and admired from other sewists is the Megan Nielsen Cottesloe swimsuit. So this is a pattern and I'll just pop in an image as well just in case you can't see it focusing very well on the camera. But basically there are a few different options to this swimsuit. So you can make a one piece swimsuit, which is quite a basic sort of one piece suit. Um, you can have the option to make a really pretty tie at the back. And there's also two variations of two piece suits as well. So you can make one that's more like a bikini, quite a low rise bikini, or you can make a high rise bikini with a sort of sportswear crop top almost. Um, and this is the version that I was attracted to, which is version D. It's the version with some quite high rise bottoms um, and then a sportswear kind of top with a band around it. Um, and the reason I wanted to go for that one is because I do prefer to have a two piece swimsuit rather than a one piece. I feel more comfortable um, in that, but I don't like to show too much tummy <laughs> and I really like to be very well covered around the bottom area, probably like most of us. But I do find with ready to wear swimwear that you just don't often get that and things can be quite skimpy and I just don't feel quite comfortable in them. So I thought I'd have a go at version D and um, I've actually seen loads of people make up this uh, version on Instagram and I just think it looks really flattering on lots of different body shapes. But that was the version that I decided to go for in the end. So with regard to sizing, I decided to make a size four in the end. So it's funny actually, because in other Megan Nielsen patterns, I'm actually a size zero based on my measurements. So a size zero is a bust 32, which I am, a waist 24, which I'm definitely not, a hip 34. But I think because in other Megan Nielsen patterns, I've made quite 
oversized things with a lot of um, ease included in the pattern. I've always gone for a size zero and just based it on the bust measurements. But this time, because obviously I was going to be making quite a fitted pair of bottoms, um, I went for a size four and the bust measurements for a size four are a bust 34, a waist 26 and a hip 36. So I'm a waist 26 and a hip 36. So I decided to go for a size four. And then um, when I was making up the top part of the pattern, I could have gone for the size zero and based it on my actual bust me measurements. But when I was cutting it out, I just felt as though it was coming up a little bit small. So I decided to go for a size four all over. And I'm really glad I did actually, because it fits really nicely. And I'm not quite sure why that is in terms of um, measurements and ease and things like that. It's just, I really just went by eye and um, what I thought was gonna fit me as I was cutting it out. And um, yeah, I'm really glad that I went for that size four in the end because a size four was obviously what I needed all over. So since swimwear making was all new to me, I did decide to make up a 12 first of all, and I needed to buy some swimwear elastic because I didn't have anything like that in my stash already. So I ordered some swimwear elastic from Fabricland online and I'll link them below just in case you're interested. As I was on their website ordering swimwear elastic, I came across this really cheap stripey lycra. <laughs> so I decided to order quite a lot of that just so that I could have a go at making up the swimsuit um, as a sort of trial just to make sure the fit and everything was okay. Um, and this is how my twirl turned out. I have shown this before briefly. So apologies if I'm kind of repeating myself. But this was my trial pair of bottoms. Um, so it was an interesting experience. And I'd say it took me a little bit of a while to sort of get the hang of what I was doing because um, it's a really simple process really. Uh, basically you just sew up the side seams and the bottom seam and then you elasticate the leg holes here. If you, if you do decide to line um, your swimsuit then you just literally make up two of the same pattern pieces and you place one inside the other and then you elasticate around the legs and then you add um, a waistband. So it is quite a simple process but I think I did find it a bit fiddly at first to get my head around how to attach the elastic to the legs. In the pattern it does give you the length of elastic that you need to attach to the legs and I, I think I'm just used to having to stretch elastic quite a lot whenever you're attaching elastic to a garment. And with this, there's not a lot of stretch in the um, elastic while you're attaching it. So um, yeah, it took me a little while to sort of get my head around that and um, sew it neatly and everything. But with a bit of practice, I sort of managed to get there in the end. So those are my trials and I tried on um, these bottoms and they fit really really nicely so I was pleased with those and um, I did actually buy some sort of nicer fabric with some nicer lining from So Me Sunshine which I'll show you in a minute so I was confident after giving that a go that I had the fit right and everything um, and I could go ahead and make my bottoms from my proper fabric. This is my twirl of the top just to quickly show you um, and while making this I realised that the top actually came up quite short on me so with my next version I did actually add an inch to the length of the top on the front and back and also the back um, in the pattern piece it actually scoops down quite low on your back compared to the front so I actually raised my back up to be in line with the front so that both scoops are exactly the same and I just redrew that onto the pattern um, and cut it so that the back and front were actually the same just because I feel a little bit more covered up that way and then for my proper version. <laughs> I made um, this version which is some really lovely navy blue swimwear um, fabric which I got from So Me Sunshine and then I've lined it with some swimwear lining inside just to sort of give a bit more extra coverage and a bit more comfort as well. I have to say that the second time around using a nicer swimwear fabric um, did make quite a difference actually and I found it a lot easier to sew this version up it came together really nicely and um, also the elastic was um, much easier to put in this time and I'm not sure if that was to do with the fabric or maybe just because I felt a bit more confident doing it that time. So what I've done is to zigzag in the elastic. So you zigzag in the elastic on the wrong side of the bottoms and then you turn the fabric in and then you um, either twin needle or zigzag on the top on the right side of the fabric just to give it a nice finish and then you're done. Um, and then you attach your 
elastic band on the top, your waistband, and you put the elastic inside the band and then you sew the band on all together. So these came together much more quickly when I knew what I was doing actually, so I'm really pleased that I made a 12 first of all. Then this is my top. So it worked really well adding that extra inch. I still went for a size four just to give me a bit more room. Um, definitely would have been too small if I had gone for the size zero as the pattern suggested. And then I began just raise the neckline so that the front and back are the same height. And you'll probably notice that I've just added a little um, flounce around the top as well, which I just added on last minute. Um, it could be a bit more flouncy actually, <laughs> um, it's more of a kind of rough, well I don't really know what it is, but it's a nice little sort of extra detail, but I did want it to be a little bit more flouncy. But I'm actually really pleased with how that swimsuit turned out and I'm so glad that I gave it a go. I was definitely way more comfortable in this swimsuit than I was in one of my ready to wear swimsuits, which I did also take with me. I wore this one to a water park where we were going down lots of slides and things like that and I, it held up really well. There wasn't any um, shifting around or any indecencies that occurred <laughs> or anything like that. I felt really comfortable in it and I felt like it really kind of held you in nicely and that's what I want from a swimsuit. So I'm so pleased that I managed to give that one a go and I would highly recommend, especially if you are a beginner swimsuit um, maker like I was, I think that's a really good pattern to try and also with all Megan Nielsen patterns the instructions are really good there's some extra tips and sort of hand holding in there she has a blog on her website with different hacks that you can try and things and also um, there's lots of photos on the website as well so I used those blogs when I was making the swimsuit up and I found it really helpful so yeah really pleased to have given that one a go as I say it's just something that I never thought that I would want to try or ever try so I'm really glad to have added a swimsuit to my sewing list. So the next thing I made was also something for more sunnier weather and um, I made a pair of Sophia trousers. So you might remember from a recent video that I had this lovely fabric and I wasn't quite sure whether to make a skirt from it or another pair of Sophia trousers and in the end I just went for the Sophia trousers because they're such a quick and easy make and I find them really comfortable and lovely to wear and I just knew that I would wear these loads in the summer. So I went ahead and just made up a pair of Sophia trousers and I love them. Um, I have three or four, three pairs of these now and I just find them really lovely to make and I find them really nice to wear in the summer. They're really cool and floaty and I just think they pair really nicely with vests and t-shirts and things. So in case you haven't seen the Sophia trousers pattern, it's from the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book, which is this one here, which I use and talk about quite a lot. And I've probably shown this pattern quite a lot as well. So again, apologies if I'm repeating myself, but it's a really lovely pattern. So you'll notice that from the picture here, the trousers are actually given as a full length trouser pattern. I've just shortened mine by around three inches just to make it um, calot length. And they come to around mid calf on me. And I just find that length a bit more flattering on me. And I just prefer it. I find it more summery as well. But you can obviously make them full length if you prefer. The Sophia trousers actually come as part of um, a few other makes in this book. You can actually make a play suit using that pattern and you can also make a pair of dungarees as well. Um, so far I've only made the play suit and the trousers. I'd really like to give the dungarees a go one day so I'll add those to my list as well. Um, but yeah, just a really lovely pattern. I don't feel like I've got too much more to say about these because um, I've talked about them before, but also they really are just a really lovely sew and a lovely wardrobe staple. I think what I like about these trousers as well is that they're not just elasticated all the way around. They've got a really nice flat front and then the back and um, part of the sides is elasticated. And I think that's just a little bit more flattering to wear rather than a fully elasticated waist. So yeah, really pretty pair. I love the colour of these. I've had this fabric for quite a while and just not really quite known what to do with it. I was going to make a skirt, as I say, but in the end it just went for an old faithful with the Sapphire trousers. So there they are. Good one for summer. The next thing I made last month was this Eve dress and it's a slight hack. Um, this was made as part of a collaboration with May Christa, My Fabrics and I do have a full sew along of this dress um, up on my channel so I'll link it down below where you can pop over and find out more details of how I made it and the changes that I made and everything. But just to sort of briefly share it with you today, so this was, um, as I say, part of a Valentine's collaboration with May Christa, My Fabrics. 
where I wanted to recreate a dress that I've seen and fallen in love with on Pinterest. So I'll pop a quick image of the Pinterest dress in here so you can see what I've based my dress on. So I used the Sew Over It Eve dress pattern as a starting point to recreate my own version of this Pinterest dress. And I've just altered the pattern slightly to make the sleeves a bit shorter so that they're more of a cap sleeve rather than the full flutter sleeve that the Eve dress pattern has. And then if I can hold it up and show you, <laughs> the fronts have actually got a curve to the hem. You're not gonna be able to see this here, I don't think. <laughs> But basically I've just rounded off the two wrap fronts of the dress to make it more similar to the Pinterest dress. Really easy um, changes to make and only slight hacks really but sometimes I love um, using patterns that I've got and just changing things slightly just to bring them a bit more up to date um, and use them for making things and recreating things that are really on trend at the moment. So this dress was a really fun one to make. So in case you haven't seen the Eve dress, this is it. It's from Sew so Over It. It's one of their older patterns, one of their sort of vintage style patterns, and I just absolutely love it. So you can make the high-low hem version with a flutter sleeve, or you can make the version with a straighter hem. So I've actually made the version with a straight hem because I know that comes up really long on me anyway, and then I've just rounded off the two front pieces, and I've used the flutter sleeve pattern piece just to make the cap sleeves. Um, and I've also just narrowed off the belt pattern piece as well to make it a little bit thinner because the belt pattern piece for this Eve dress is actually quite wide. Um, so yeah, really, really pleased with that dress. It was really good fun to make. I really love doing things like this, um, finding an idea of a garment or something that I want to make and then using patterns from my stash already just to adapt things slightly and bring them a bit more up to date, as I say, and make something completely new and it's surprising how much of a difference just making those little tweaks and changes actually makes to a pattern. So I was really pleased especially with how these little cap sleeves turned out because I have made the Eve dress with a full flutter sleeve before and it was actually a little bit much for me, I felt a bit flouncy in it. So just to know that by shortening the sleeves by an inch or so it just gives a completely different effect and I feel much more comfortable in it. So this fabric is a lovely viscose crepe, it's from My Fabrics, and it was given to me as part of this collaboration. MyFabrics.co.uk have some lovely viscose fabrics over on their website, so I'll link them below if you want to pop over and check them out. Um, but yeah, this is a really lovely fabric, it's really crinkly, it's one of those where when you wash it, it all kind of crinkles in and you don't know whether to iron it or not. I did actually iron this a bit flatter but you can still see the crinkles in it and I just think it's got a really pretty texture and I love the colours in this. Um, you'll know that these are really me colours like with the navy and the pinks and the mustards and things like that. So yeah, I really love this dress, I'm really pleased with it and I will link my sew along down below as well if you want any more information on this dress. So lastly then, I'll share a bit about what I'm wearing. So what I'm wearing is a sleeveless Davenport dress and you all know already how much I love the Davenport dress pattern. I've made a couple of versions already um, and I've wanted for a long while to make a sleeveless version and I thought I would quickly try and whip this up before we went away and I'm so pleased with the result. It was a really quite simple change to make. I've literally just taken out the sleeves um, and I've kept everything else the same. So I will put a picture in of me wearing this so you can see it full length. I'm really annoyed actually because I did wear this on holiday but I just didn't get any photos of anything that I wore. I think I always meant to but then when we were out and about and everything I just completely forgot. So I will get another couple of full length photos of me wearing this just so that you can see it. Um, I'll stand up and show you anyway. <laughs> so you can see that it's got the lovely drawstring waist here, which I really like about the Davenport dress. I find it really flattering um, and also really comfy as well. And then I've got the pockets here, if I can find this pocket. So it has pockets here and then a lovely frill at the bottom. <laughs> so to make this sleeveless, um, I literally just made up the pattern as it is, um, following all of the instructions. And then when it came to inserting the sleeves, I've just added the flutter to the top and then bias bound the armhole um, and that's turned out really neatly. Obviously I'm wearing it at the moment so I can't show you the insides but I'll put in a picture of the insides as well just so that you can see the binding and how it all turned out. Um, I didn't alter the armhole at all. I did wonder if I might need to because sometimes when you're making a dress which is designed to have sleeves into a sleeveless dress you need to just narrow in the armholes a bit. But with this one, because it's got the flutter sleeves, it's quite 
square anyway, if you know what I mean. So I didn't actually alter any of the shaping of the armholes in the end. I think these flutters are really lovely and flattering um, on a sleeveless dress. And I think, dare I say it, they actually work better on a sleeveless dress than they do with sleeves. <laughs> I know a few people have said actually that they've been put off by the flutters on this dress. They're really easy to take out. So if you want to make the long sleeve version, just leave them off and make it with sleeves but without the flutters. But as a sleeveless dress, I just think it works really nicely and these are really pretty and flattering. And it's just a bit more coverage as well if you're out in the sun or whatever, which is always good for me. So a quick view of the Davenport pattern. Again, I know I've shown this a million times. I'm really sorry, I'm repeating myself a bit. But if you haven't seen it before, this is what the Davenport dress looks like. So it's designed to have some really pretty sleeves which are um, quite puffy and they're gathered in at sort of bracelet length with a piece of elastic and then you have the flutter sleeve at the top normally so just by taking out that sleeve you can make it really easily into a sleeveless dress and um, the fabric was from stop and still it's just a lovely viscose and i've had it in my stash for quite a while but i do think they still have it so i'll link it below if i can but it worked really nicely for this dress it's lovely and drapey and it's quite stable to work with as well so it's really nice to sew up so yeah so pleased to have tried that one I really want to try a top version now and I know lots of people have made this dress into a top so I think for summertime that's definitely going to be something that I'd like to try as well so that's everything I made in February I really hope you like what I've made Thanks so much for watching everyone. I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me know as always what you've been working on and what you're sewing at the moment and what your favorite make from February was. If you have enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you gave it a like and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I'd love to have you as a subscriber. I'll be back next week with a fabric haul video sharing everything that I'm planning to make in March. So I'd love it if you join me again next week to see what I'm planning to sew up. Have a lovely day and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.